Morning Asano, what a beautiful morning it is too. It's uh, Friday, just about to, just finished loading up the truck, putting everything on charge for our big drive. We've got our collars, our GoPro, our phone on charge and our head torch. Off up to the far north, I'm taking Jared with me and we're picking up my bro Keegan in Auckland on the way through. Uh, it's going to be your first chance to meet Keegan, he has been um, behind the scenes of Blokes Can Cook 2 since day one. Um, giving me advice on social media and, and like how to stay within the rules and not get my page shut down and when the page got hacked he got it back for us. Anyways, we're going up to the far north to stay with the bro Rada and uh, his, his partner Soph and um, what, what else we're doing while we're up there is we're going to um, harvest our first load of uh, manuka and get it ready to dry for Bloke Smokes Wood Chunks, which is a um, business that Keegan and I have just started. Um, <coughs> and we uh, just need to get our first lot of wood on the ground. We're going to have manuka, putakawa, cherry and fijoa are the four woods we're going to focus on the most. And then we're going to get into making some lump charcoal out of the manuka and the putakawa as well. So we'll have native hardwood lump charcoal soon. Um, but, you know, all in good time. First step, step number one, cut down some manuka. So we're going up north uh, to a, a little block of family land that um, my family's owned for a long time and um, we're gonna get some manuka on the ground, stack it all in the pole shed and go make some kick-ass content. We've got fishing rods, diving gear, pig hunting gear. So who knows what the bro rider's got planned for us. Exciting really, exciting as. Well, you can't run a smoking wood business without a chainsaw. So we've stopped here still shop Albany and we've got ourselves a brand new little still MS 180 and we got hooked up some free lube a free chain and some free two-stroke oil so we pretty much have everything we need now eventually we're going to buy a chipper and we are going to buy a big trailer but at the moment we're just keeping it to the bare minimum so we've got ourselves a chainsaw and a good work ethic, well, an average work ethic anyway. So we've got that sorted, that's in Albany. Just gotta get back on the motorway and head back to Northcote to where the bro lives. He's finished work in half an hour and then it takes him about five minutes to get home he reckons, so yeah, sooner that happens the better and then we can get back on the bloody road and head north, get out of Auckland. We got him Fano. here he is. The man, right, we're here. The man, the myth, the legend. This Come. fella's been in the background of Blokes Can Cook 2 from day one. You wouldn't believe the amount of work he does in the background for my social media illiterate self. I can't believe it's taken this long for me to actually get on the page and us to do some stuff together, but yeah, let's do it. Obviously with Keegan living in Auckland and me living in Taranaki, it makes it a bit difficult for us to get together and create content, but now that we're getting this um, smoking chunks business all up and going, we're, we're into it once a month. We'll be up north making cool content. So we're just pulling onto the motorway. It's Friday afternoon. It's packed. It is. Not overly thrilled about it because I freaking hate traffic. But we'll see you guys when we're up in Northland. Where, Jared? Where are we going, Jared? Northland. Good man. Yep. The naughty north. <laughs> the Brindu ones are closed still from Tropical Cyclone Gabriel's destruction. So uh, we've got to go, once we get to walk with, we've got to turn off and go Bungify and then up and over the ridge there and pop out in uh, Waipu. And then we can carry on heading north. Bean. A little bit of a detour, but it's probably only going to add 20 minutes onto our journey. Made it to White Papa. It's been a massive drive, but um, it's going to stop, get some light refreshments, and then go to the bro's place and just kick back. I think he caught a kingy this morning, so we're going to have some fresh kingfish and chips for dinner and have a few drinks and then. I don't know, we could be going to do something tonight, but 
we've got a bit of mahi to do tomorrow with our firewood stuff so um, yeah probably just get a relatively early night in get up early and get on the go go get some manuka cut and stacked up on the farm What have we got here, cousin? Tingy Makers. We've made it. We've, We've made, made it, Fano. We're in the far north. Fresh fish and chips for dinner. Fresh kingfish. <whistles> Big feed, some beers, and then a rest for tomorrow's mahi. <whistles> Check it out. Kingfish, chips, bread and butter salad. Steph would be proud as of that. We are on. Far North Fish and Chips. All it needs is some salt and pepper. for us to get um, to get the drying process underway we're actually going to build a little kiln to dry it with so we can start getting um, getting it on the move but that's all happening in March next month when we're up here so this time we're just salvaging wood getting it up to the pole shed like I've already said and stacking it to dry um, the track is well overgrown so we're gonna next time when we come back we'll bring a scrub bar so we can clear the track and give ourselves better access but for now we're just going to yield all this manuka out of here and we should get, oh, looking at it, two or three cube out of what's here and that's enough for us to start, get, get it drying and it makes for a positive outcome. Um, what we are going to look at doing is making maximum use of the trees. So if you look at this tree that's still standing, we've got at the bottom, it's nice and thick, sort of 120 to 150 mil. That's really good for... Um, splits for offsets and for turning into hardwood lump charcoal and then once we get up to the slightly thinner stuff that's what we're going to cut into little chunks to be put on your on your kettles and your eggs and um, the likes of that and then all the very top branches are going to go through the chipper and that'll be sold as manuka wood chip so we're trying to make the maximum use of the tree and to keep this as sustainable as possible and have the least impact on the land we are trying to, the only stuff we're not using is the very tips, the very tips of the branches, what we call the fluff. Like this, you can see it's all been left behind over the years by me and my family as we're gathering wood for our cooking, because this is where we get it all from. Um, so we want to preserve that resource as well as uh, essentially monetizing it at the same time. So that's what we're doing, and <coughs> I'm just going through, grading the logs. Keegan comes through, cleans up after me, loads it on the truck, take it up come back down redo the process really simple at the moment that's all we've got to do no. just like that yeah. <laughs>
Yeah. One more light boy and then we're all done out my head. Then yeah. I can get my bed. I know. Yeah. And Everyone get gets a bed. A treat, yep. Yeah. And then we're going to go to the beach and have fun at the beach for the afternoon. Yeah. yeah. And then go somewhere out at the playground. Yeah. And right. then everywhere. Let's get into this next load so we can get it done, I guess. Some of these trees had slipped off down the hill when we cut them. So I've hooked them up to the truck. I'm gonna try pull them up. We're not gonna try, we're gonna succeed. We've already been doing it for a while. Sweet bro. So that's just hit on the stump. So we just give it a little yank over like that. Yeah, bro, where you go? Where you go? And the truck pulls our manuka right up onto the flat. Yep, hold there. Get our chainsaw, chop all the fur off, throw it down the hill, load up our sizable smoking chunks using the old Triton workhorse awesome system this is how our family's been doing it as long as I can remember um, to harvest the stuff that's further down the hill eventually we'll get a block and tackle and we will run that through to a anchor point up the top and then use the truck to pull, but for now we're just harvesting the stuff off the edges. What do you reckon, Keegan? You're doing pretty good. We're doing alright. Yeah. We're doing yeah. alright. See a good work rate. A few loads done. What do you reckon, Jared? How are we going, mate? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's his input. Okay. <laughs> alright, let's go. Ah, oh, me rope slipped. Oh, we'll go back down and reattach. The way. Oh. All right, bye. Right. Take three. Definitely don't try this at home. Yeah, bro. That's that. You beauty. All right, last load. So I'll stack for now. Yeah. What do you reckon, Jared? Yeah. Are we going good? mean all right just finished our first pile or well, final pile i should say for the day for the day blokes can smoke wood coming to you soon Both smokes. righto manu commission is complete we've stacked probably two and a half cube um, ready to dry and, and process as it dries. Uh, now we're just headed back to the Bro Riders. We're going to go um, down to one of his family's beaches and set up. It's a bit showery, but we're not going to let that um, hold us back. We're going to set up and do a bit of surf casting, maybe some free diving. Going to set up, um, I've got me a spinner saw with me gonna set that up and get a we've got a bit of a rolled mutton roast that um, Rada um, did for us earlier this week I'm gonna chuck that on the spinner saw and we're actually gonna try rig up a um, we're gonna light a fire on the beach and then we're gonna rig up an arch over it and then hang with wire all other sorts of meat over the fire so that's gonna be quite fun um, what else are we up to I'm gonna if, if the showers are as fleeting as they seem to be, 
then we're going to camp out there and then potentially depending on how many beersies we drink tonight we might go for a pig hunt in the morning before we head off back down south <clears throat> so it's been a super productive day today really early start but yeah, i mean it, you got to in, in the far north you gotta you gotta get up early get your mahi done before the sun's blazing and then it just leaves you with so much of the rest of the day for activities so yeah just get the truck ready when we get back and get into it check the spot it's a bit breezy out the way but we're going to be sheltered down in uh down in there there so that's where we're going we're going to put the um oh, that's right yeah, oh. We're going to put the um, burley in the water and get some fish around hopefully. No, Got the GoPro, it, we'll attach that to a stick and we'll, um, and we'll um, carry on. Old Jared's just fallen over into a gorse bush and we've only taken about 10 steps so it's okay, it's okay. It's a prickle Jared. Blackberry. Oh, oh wicked, blackberry even better. We're in Fano, we've made it. Boys are setting up down there. What a spot. It's all Fano land. Pretty exclusive access. Just absolutely blessed. It's a little bit rough out there. Calm airs in here. Let's go. Let's go. Kairata, yes. Snap. Trevally. Trevally. Yeah, nice buddy. All right, you want to pop it in here? No. Chuck it in the eye on. Oh yeah, chuck it on the beers. All good. All right. Too much. Your title of smallest fish kick in the world. Took your title. Ah! What did you just ask? Oh, the hogs had what I took to open a beer and go on, Fano. Hogs can't drink too. What brand are they? Skylager, what do you mean? No, the hogs. Oh, Black Magic, brother, of course. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha 
Oi, oi, come back, come back. Hang on, let me run. Yeah. I got a fat Trevelli that's gonna make for me and sashimi down the beach later. Got a couple kahawai, we're gonna eat one. We'll hang that out over our big fire once we get started and the other one can go for bait down the beach because we used all our bait here. First we're on the two. Chair. Do you know what we don't have is yeah, like whole chooks. Boom. If we had some whole chooks, we could catch some three meter flatties. <laughs> Good girl. Yeah, well, it's only in them. Good duck. Like, it's spinning around. Yeah. Duck. Yeah, right, yeah. Says, duck. Quick. Says, duck. Hurry up. Should the bros rock up? <laughs> Had a pretty successful morning out on the water. Look at the size of this. Oh, you reckon let's just take it home? Yeah. Gotta love Northland. How's breakfast coming along, cuz? Oh, good. Just cleaning up our fish from last night. She was a good night. Bro's caught this. Just a, he's a, quite a sizable snapper. This is a uh, size 10 red band to give you a bit of a scale. She's not bad. No, if can one of those, not bad. If you can swallow one of these, let's find out. Yep. Yeah. Not quite. 17 or 18. Yep. We're on the road again team, we've uh, just left the bro right at the beach, say goodbye to him, trucks all loaded, Jared's loaded, we had a really successful weekend um, getting the manuka ready, had a pretty cool fish, oh, it's been a bloody awesome weekend really, now we've just got to get the long slog home done. Um, Keegan's going to get us back as far as Auckland to save me having to do the whole 10 hours again. And then I will um, trundle off home with 
Um, Jared. Uh, what's it? Daddy, can I have yeah, a half? Yeah, about 200k. No. It's half a tank, please. Oh, we'll get gas in the final aid. I don't want to shipping. Look, um, I have the ice block. Your ice block, Jared. Daddy, can I have the ice block? Because I don't like the shipping thing. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so just stop to get some ice from the BP to put on our fish to keep them chilled for the journey. And hopefully they should be nice and set when we get home. Um, and yeah, let's get on the road. Just in Waipapa at the moment. I